Hi there, this is Elon from MetroBoard and today I'm going to show you how to both check the tension in your timing belt and also adjust it if necessary. Um, typically you want to check this about once a month just to make sure it hasn't gotten too loose. If it's gotten really loose, you'll probably hear it clicking when you hit, when you break pretty hard, so that's an obvious sign that it's too loose, but it's just a good idea to check it on a monthly basis to make sure it's in a good spot. So uh, the first thing we got to do is take off the transmission cover. Now you'll see there's two screws here that hold it on. In this particular board, they're Phillips head. Some of our newer boards use uh, Allen head, uh, button head cap screws. So if that's the case, then you'll need to use a 332nd Allen driver. But in this case, I have a um, Phillips head, so I'm going to go ahead and ruin it with a Phillips screwdriver. As you loosen this, you'll see that there are a few pieces all sandwiched together here. So as you're lifting it up, you want to kind of grab the spacer underneath. You see there's a spacer here. If you don't grab it, it'll probably just fall off, which is okay, but just make sure you pick it up. It may fall over here, and then just go ahead and take it out until we're ready to put it back together. And you'll notice that there's a screw, a split lock washer, and also a flat washer, so just make sure you don't lose any of that as you take that apart. Set that aside for now. So the first thing we're going to do is going to check the tension on the timing belt as is before we adjust anything. Um, I'm going to use a smartphone app, and I'll show you how that works. So it's called Guitar Tuner, or Chromatic Guitar Tuner on our site. You can see exactly where to download it. You can get it both for um, iOS as well as uh, Android. So let's go ahead and open that up. Basically what we're going to be doing, we're going to be plucking this timing belt here to get the frequency that it's resonating at, which is indirectly going to tell us the tension. That's a common way to kind of accurately measure the tension in a timing belt. So what you're going to want to do is, uh, it's already on, so all you got to do is take like a the same T-handle Allen key that I'm going to use to adjust the timing belt later, or some similar rigid object to pluck it. You can pluck it with your finger, but depending on your skin, it might get a little bit irritating after a while. So you want to just kind of... Okay, so I don't know if you're seeing that, but I'm getting about 183 hertz on that reading, okay? Now you want to do this in a quiet environment. This is not like a guitar string that makes a lot of sound when you pluck it. So you need to do it in a relatively quiet environment. Um, so definitely don't do it outside. You, it won't get very good results. And you need to pluck it several times in a row quickly until you get a consistent reading. So I'm getting 180 pretty consistently. Okay, now you'll, you'll note too that as you turn the belt, it'll change a little bit. So you want to kind of turn the wheel a little bit, check in a few spots, because there's some high and low spots depending on how perfectly round things are in the manufacturing process. You have to check in a few spots. I'm getting 184 hertz. 185, this one's pretty consistent. Now it jumped to 198, so that's okay. It normally varies a bit. And now I'm even at 219. Okay. You can kind of rest your hand on the wheel as you're doing this. And you want the mic very close to the actual belt, otherwise you might, may not pick up any signal. Okay, so that one looks okay, but let's just assume that it was too low. You basically want to get the frequency between about 200 to 250 hertz. 200 would be the low point as you adjust it. 250 would be the high point. So you want to get it in that range. In this case, it's okay, but I'm going to pretend like we have a problem here so we can go through the process of tuning it. So if, in fact, it's too low or too tight in some cases, you want to go ahead and loosen these two motor mounting nuts or motor, mount, motor mounting bolts. In this case, we have two hex cap screws, and you want to use an eight millimeter nut driver like this. Never use a socket wrench; just use a nut driver. Otherwise, you might put too much torque on it, especially when you're tightening them. Some older models will have a Phillips set here, so if you have a Phillips, go ahead and use a Phillips. In this case, I'm using an eight millimeter nut driver. You can also use a five sixteenth inch English size; that'll also work. But technically, it's a, it is a metric bolt, so. Anyway, let's go ahead. All we're going to do is loosen these just a little bit, okay? Maybe like a half turn, just enough so that the belt tension loosens a little bit. Now you can see the belt just kind of spread out a little bit because it loosened up a little bit. And you want it just enough so that you can slide the motor. Like, let me loosen it just a little bit more. You don't want too much slop. You just want enough so that the motor can slide freely back and forth. Go a little bit more. Okay. All right. So now you can see you can kind of free, freely slide. That's important because we're going to be adjusting it using another tool and you want to make sure it can slide freely. So here you can see it's of course way loose. 
this is never going to work. So let's say we're in this state now. We want to now readjust the tension. So what we got to do is you got to kind of slide the motor back, get it kind of as tight as you can with your hand. And then we're going to use this special tool that you got when you got your metro board originally. Your version might look a little bit different, but basically it has this kind of tab that sticks out and that's going to go under the motor on the, on the red side of the motor on the back. So I'll flip the board around so you can see it. And then you orient this slot um, so that it's going to stick through this hole right here. So when we stick it through, we're going to see it come right there, if you can see right now. Okay. So you have to kind of push the motor as far out as possible. It might be a little bit of a tight fit, especially depending on what wheel size you have. It's a little bit of a tighter. So you see I got the, I got the little slot in there sticking through this hole. I'll turn the board on the side so you can see exactly what it looks like from the other orientation. Okay. So you can see it looks like that, basically. Okay. And what we're going to do is, is we're going to take this, in this case I'm using a 4.5 millimeter T-handle Allen key. You can also use a 3 16th inch, either one should work. Okay, and you're going to basically go ahead and start tightening that socket head cap screw. And you're going to see it's pushing the motor as it's doing that, basically tensioning the belt. So once you get it a little bit tight, um, you can kind of turn it back upside down. It's a little bit easier to see from this side as we're actually doing the adjustment. So we're going to slowly tighten it. Okay, and you'll see the belt starting to get tighter as you're doing this. It's very sensitive, so don't do it too fast because you may buy, you may pass the point you need to actually check. So you just do it slowly and kind of get a sense for okay, it's getting a little bit tight now. So I'm going to check it now, see where we're at. Put this down for a second. Now when you check it, you can check it in this state without tightening the bolts, but it tends to increase a little bit once you actually tighten the bolts. So let's just see where we're at without tightening the bolts and then we'll see if we need to adjust it I mean, if we're even close. So right now I'm getting about 166, okay? Again, you gotta plug it a few times in a row and make sure you're getting a consistent reading, otherwise you might be getting some noise, background noise. I'm gonna back a little bit so I can see a little better. about 150, so that's a little bit low. But what I'm gonna try is, I'm gonna tighten these a little bit more, all the way tight now. So what, I, what typically happens as you tighten these, the tension actually will increase a little bit from where it was before, okay? Now let's check, because it may have actually gone up from where it was before. It feels quite a bit tighter now, let's see. See now, this is a good example. You see how high it went? It already went up to 300 hertz, that's too tight. See, so you really need to check it in its final state when it's, everything's tightened. Yeah, it's about 300, so that's way too tight. So we're going to loosen that okay, just a little bit again, about a half, half turn. Then we're going to back off that screw again. You can't get a little bit looser. And then we'll tighten it. So it's really, it really doesn't make sense to check the tension without these two screws tightened because it will change quite dramatically. So you have to kind of get close knowing that you're going to go up a little bit as you tighten these at the end. So let's go ahead and tighten them again. Okay, spin it a little bit, get it. In a nice spot. See, now we dropped to about 256. That's pretty good. Uh, we go 263, 252, 239. You can see I'm rotating, it's changing a little bit. Now the low is 227 now. Now it's going up again, 234. 230, 240 something, 249, 232, 245, 247, it's going down again. So yeah, basically we're seeing a range between 250 hertz as the, the highest frequency, which means the most tense for the belt, and then going down to about 220, and that's kind of a good range to be in. So. At this point, what we want to do is, you want to take, now that we're tight, we're going to take the tool out, okay? Don't leave this tool in. So we're going to go ahead and take, so I'll turn it this way so you can see a little better. So we just loosen this up. Now remember, this has already been clamped in place, so it shouldn't move at this point, but you never know. We want to double check it afterwards. So just loosen that up, okay? And then you kind of wiggle it out. It's a little bit of a tight fit, but it should just come right out, okay? And let's go ahead, and after I do that, I usually like to, Get a little bit, check this one more time that it's tight. Now you don't want to go too crazy because you can strip these. 
but just to kind of hand tighten it till it feels snug, but not too crazy. Okay, let's check again. Sometimes when you take that out, things can move a little bit, so you want to double check you're still where you were. So let's go ahead and try this again. 220, 230, that's about right. 217, 224, 247, 253, 248. So yeah, it pretty much hasn't changed. You just want to double check that. Okay, so that's all there is to it. The only remaining step is to go ahead and put the transmission cover back on. And uh, like I said, you want to be careful as you're putting on that these tend to kind of fall out. And so uh, you want to kind of grab them. What a little tip you can do if it's a little hard for you to grab is you can actually take a little bit of grease like Vaseline or something, and put a little bit on the screw before you put this in and it'll tend to kind of grab it so it won't fall off as you're putting it on. Or you can kind of hold it with your fingers, but you just have to kind of get it roughly in place. Okay. You just kind of eyeball it from the side. Make sure you're going in the thread hole. You kind of want to hand, hand tighten it first to get it going. I want to do this outer one first. It's a little easier to get the outer one because you can see it better. And then the inner one should do that as well. I think it was according to plan. Okay, there we go. So just make sure you're not cross threading them. Don't force anything in if it's not going in. It's probably not in the right spot. Okay, so we got those kind of loosely hand placed. And then you're going to go ahead and just tighten those down. There's a little bit of slop here. So as you're tightening it, make sure you have kind of an even gap between the edge of the transmission cover and the wheel. It should be roughly in that place, but since there's a little bit of slop, depending on how you tighten it, it may not be exactly perfect. So try to kind of get it in the right position before you fully tighten. Okay. And you don't need to go too crazy on these either. Just get them snug. And remember, don't forget that you had the uh, Phillips head followed by the split lock washer followed by the flat washer and then the transmission cover. This one will tighten a little bit more. It wasn't all the way tight. Okay. And that's all there is to it. You should be back up and running. And um, like I said, just check this periodically, maybe once a month. Um, if you have any concerns or questions about this process, of course, call us or email us and we'll be happy to help out.